and welcome or welcome back to Party Trick Astrology. I am Nina. And I'm the rest of Party Trick Astrology. <laughs> and we are here today to do our second house video. So this being the second video of our house series, we just want to mention that this series is actually completely supplemental to our astrology course that we are putting out. So that will be coming out after this series is yeah. over. The astrology course is not free like our videos but if you would like to see what that course has to offer how much it is and all of that definitely check out our website at partridgeastrology.com shop it's the only thing on our site right now that isn't out of stock so if you feel like treating yourself mm -hmm. like the second house wants you to mm -hmm. and if you're just interested in astrology in general get the links down below Ding -dong. we hope that you already watched our first house video if you haven't what are you doing don't you know how to count this is the second house Astrology is the first house. Astrology is a lot more practical than people realize. Mm -hmm. It goes in order. One, two. So that, that video will be linked down below if you haven't checked out our first house video. Everyone has Russia a Sunday. first house. So. Everybody's got a second house. So this applies to every person and living thing in the world. We try to get our viewage up, you know? <laughs> trying to make all our subscribers watch this series. Oh my gosh, you can do what you want. <laughs> you know every reason to watch the 8th house video and nobody's gonna watch the 2nd <laughs> yeah. house video. <laughs> Listen, the second house is an underrated house. I like the second house. After doing, after thinking about it more, living with a second house stellium, it's a lot more than you realize in the second it's house. It's a very important house. We have Leo in our second house, yeah, which puts an emphasis on it. Anywhere that you have Leo is kind of like having a second sun there, yeah. almost. But so let's get into what the second house means. Right. The second house is the house that is ruled by Taurus. Ooh. It is called a succeeded house, mm -hmm. just meaning that it comes after an angular house. Right. So you're like, hey. Here I am. Here is me. I am a blank rising. I have these planets in the first house. This is who I am. Now, what's around me? What do yeah. I own? What's what do next? I have? What we talked about in the first house is that it's very connected to your birth story. It's your first impression. So this stage of your life, your second house stage of your life is when you start developing object permanence mm -hmm. because Taurus in the second house has a lot to do with material possessions. This house is the house of money mm -hmm. and self-worth. So it's that age where children begin to become have, aware, a little bit more aware. Yeah, and they, they have security blankets all right, of a sudden. Yes. They feel very attached to their teddy bears. Right. They feel this attachment to things. And Taurus has a lot to do with security. It's the opposite of Scorpio. It's not change, it's not about death, nothing's dying here. Yeah, it's, it's just what things are staying the same. What is safe, what makes me feel comfortable. And not only that, because the second house is how you interact with your things, how you treat your things, how you treat the things you own. But what's the main thing that you own? Yourself. I was gonna say money. <laughs> In this world, yes, but the main thing that you own is yourself. That's the one thing that you have through and through, right? And so this is also the house of self-worth. Mm -hmm. And that's a huge thing that I think a lot of people and astrologers look over is that how you find your self-worth and how you feel good about yourself is what's in your second house. Mm -hmm. Because the second house is the house of money. Mm -hmm. And so when people ask about their careers, we'll look at the second house. Mm -hmm. The second house is just as important as the 10th house in looking to careers because when you're looking for a career, you want something that gives you a sense of self-worth. Mm -hmm. And it has a lot to do with your security, how you're going to make your money, how you're going to sustain yourself, how you're going to achieve that security mm -hmm. financially, what's going to make you feel good feel safe and how you're going to go about that. Let's say you like X, right? You like doing this thing. You like, you have this hobby, right? But it's just a hobby. It's not what fulfills you. It's not how you want to make your money. You can still like that. That's why there are certain things that are hobbies and there are certain things that you want to earn money from, mm -hmm. right? Because you might enjoy doing that just for the sake of enjoying it for yourself, whatever it might be, but you don't find self-worth there. You don't find your yeah. sense or your purpose. It doesn't instill there. confidence in you. Mm -hmm. I have turned pretty much every single hobby of mine into an income source, mm -hmm. except 
for a few things that I don't have that same connection to. Like, I really enjoy watercoloring. I've literally done it my entire life. I have a watercolor of hers in my room. It's very um, relaxing and de-stressing. But because of going to an art school, now that I'm out of it, I consider myself a pretty good watercolor. But I know that I'm not very, or I don't have that same amount of confidence. Because, passion, too. Yeah, passion. It's just something you do and you're not gonna yeah, judge it as much. Exactly. You're not doing it to be perfect and make money off of it. You're doing it to just feel good. Yeah, bad. right. It also relates to what is happening in my in my second house. Yeah, you can see like your brand right. yeah. in your second house. Where I want to make my money is me. Mm -hmm. And what I was thinking about just last night with the second house is how much the first house will inform your second house. So Virgo Risings, without an interception, have Libra in the second house. So Virgo Risings are going to be analytical, very judgmental, very specific how they want things done, and that can isolate them very easily. Mm -hmm. That can make them not have many friends because they're so critical and they're so judging of, I mean, this is just one piece of them, right? Mm -hmm. So critical and judging of the friends that they have, but yet where they get their self-worth is in the second house of Libra, which is all about friends, being non-judgmental, being very welcoming, very, very friendly, being very charming, and that is the qualities that a Virgo rising has trouble with. It's not the opposite, obviously, but it's something very, it's something that you're uncomfortable with, but yet that's where you find your self-worth, and so I think a lot of it has to do with tackling those issues. Like, obviously, an easy, an easy explanation would be Cancer rising, Leo in the second house, uh, as Shire, uh, have trouble expressing yourself as a Cancer rising, but yet where when you express yourself and when you bring out of that box is where you find there. confidence. Because where you find your self-worth is not expressing your first house. It's expressing your second house. And I think a lot of people forget about that and they find that people want them to express their first house or they feel obligated to express their first house all the time. But what they don't realize is that where people can find their true confidence is by expressing those things in the second house. Mm -hmm. Gemini risings um, typically will have cancer in the second house. Cancer in the second house really speaks to nursing. And then that would make you have a very good bedside manner with mm -hmm. a Gemini rising. Gemini rising can be kind of friendly with everybody, can kind of chit chat with everyone. Yeah. Libra with Scorpio in a second. You think of Libra risings can be these shallow people, can be these very much all about everyone else, but where they find their self-worth is really diving within themselves and figuring out who they are. Mm -hmm. The shallow Libra risings that are showing themselves as they think everybody else wants to are not getting any self-worth from it. Mm -hmm. It feels like, at least America, I can, you know, because I live in America and whatever, we're so ruled by the dollar and we're mm -hmm. so ruled by money and Cap Capitalism. Yeah, and it feels a lot like the world never kind of they did the first house and they did the second house and America never got past that <laughs> You know what I mean? Like America kind of got stuck in this um, what can be a Surface level house not that it is but, but people can. can fall into that very easily And a lot of astrologers write it off don't talk about it much They think of it as oh, that's not a spiritual house. Let's talk about the 12th house and the 8th house, but it is a very personal mm -hmm. house and that's why how you treat your items is a lot of times a reflection of how you treat yourself mm -hmm. and you find somebody who's not taking very good care of himself is obviously not taking very good care of their home either because it's one in the same mm -hmm. you know and it does speak to how you're going to make your money it can also speak to how you're going to spend yes, your money that's another thing that we forgot to mention yeah. it shows how you spend and what you want to buy you can also see how people are going to dress in the second house as well because it does inform it if they're kind of dressing to how they want, they're going to dress more to their second house because that's where they find their self-worth or how they decorate. You can see a lot of people's personality and the things that I, they own. Because the way that planets in houses express themselves differently than house rulers, I find that planets in the second house will speak more to your relationship with money, mm -hmm. um, how your money life is affected. Yes. So if you think about a house as literally a house mm -hmm. and a planet as literally someone living in a house. Mm -hmm. The house that I live in, my apartment, say it's empty. The planet or the person, I move in here and of course I am affected by the house. I am affected by the environment. I'm affected by the fact that there's no air conditioning. I'm mm -hmm. affected by the fact that the heating is really dodgy. I'm affected by the space, the color of the walls, all of that. The house is going to affect the planet. But more than I'm affected by this space, I'm affecting the space much more. Mm -hmm. In the metaphor that I am the planet. I have decorated the place. Yes. I painted that wall. Mm -hmm. I've 
found a sort of style here. Mm -hmm. I've decided which side of the bed is facing right. and where the couch is and yeah. where the desk is and what is important to me in this. Mm -hmm. It's so, like the flair. Yeah. So I find that planets in houses affect the house more even than the house affecting the planet. Although oh, both okay. are true, you know, because people will ask in the comments, like on a Mars video, like, oh, uh, my boyfriend's Mars is in Sagittarius, but it's in the fourth house. Does that mean that he's going to be more loyal? And I find that that's mm -hmm. less of a prominent thing than yeah. the fact that Mars in the fourth house is affecting the fourth house. Right, you yes. Know? So with planets in the second house, they're really affecting money. Mm -hmm. I would say. Somebody with a concentration of planets or like a stellium, like my roommate has a stellium in the second house. And in his stellium I really see how much it's affected by what sign the planet is, is in the house, right? Because if you look to somebody like a Rockefeller, they're going to have second house stuff, right? They're super into money, that's all they think about, right? But it's going to be more selfish, you know what I mean? Like my roommate has two Capricorn planets in the second house. So that's gonna be less about a Rockefeller, which is just like money, 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 not thinking about Ford, it, this, Ford, this Ford. is what I know I want. Yeah. Whereas something with like an earth placement or something like that, they're gonna be more like, let's get to the bottom and let's figure out what money means in the society, let's figure out what it is, right? So it can really just depend on the sign and placement. Yeah, let's talk also a bit about the nature of the kind of planet. So malefic planets, right. you're going to have a more strenuous relationship, obviously, mm -hmm. with money. Mars, yeah, Mars Saturn, Pluto, Pluto, Neptune, Uranus. Personal planets, mm -hmm. especially the Sun, sun you're, Moon, Mercury, going, Venus. you're going to find your identity more rooted in the second house. Even south node and north mm -hmm. node, finding that in the second house could mean that as a child, you definitely had a strong relationship with a teddy bear or a security. Yeah, bear. what it could be also is like if you have your son in the second house or like a, a personal planet, right? You might overly identify with the things that you own and the things that you place on you and not identify with your body at all. Mm -hmm. You just find your identity through what you put on and what is around you, mm -hmm. you know, and what you own, I should say. By around you, I just mean the, the things that you own in your room. The second house is very grounded in reality, but almost to the point where like it can lose touch of the spiritual. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because if you have too much of a concentration in anything like the second house. It's only um, concerned with the here and now and the, right, physical, the physical and the Taurus. Mm -hmm. And Scorpio is the opposite of Taurus. People with too much of a concentration in the second house or in Taurus can be very scared. Mm -hmm. um, because when you think about a How small child in that stage of life, that second house stage of life, and they lose their security blanket, it's the end of the world. Mm -hmm. It's just like devastating. And it triggers those feelings of loss and unknown mm -hmm. and who am I without this? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because you might feel like if you lose something, you lose a piece of yourself. Yeah. Like you feel like the memory is in the item instead of the memory in you. And you know, there's there's a little bit of the opposite signs in each other. Obviously, it's a very Scorpio thing as well to be afraid of losing things. So you'll see that both of people with second house stuff and eighth house stuff, fear of losing. Yeah, because it's that security. Yeah. With security, you don't want to venture off too far mm -hmm. into the unknown. Yeah. So that's why Shane was Taurus saying- Because Taurus doesn't like the unknown. Yeah. That's why Shane was saying if you have a concentration that is too much into the second house or in Taurus, you're going to sacrifice a bit of looking into spirituality, looking into the unknown, mm -hmm. looking into yeah. the cult. Yeah. It could also be the thought that you live too much in this world, mm -hmm. almost. And that could be why you're scared to venture because because I really do think about it as a circle. I think of everything kind of starts off in the first house and as you go about your life, they kind of stop and they kind of get placed in yeah, certain areas, yeah. right? So if you got all that stuff in the second house, it kind of feels like you're not allowed to go past that. Yeah, you got to this, that point in your development yeah. and you're like, this is where I like to be. Any earth house can feel a little bit stuck because mm -hmm. it's so here, you yeah. know what I mean? With the second house stellium, it can go to the obsession with money in the sense of not only obsessing about it, like all I want to do is make it, make it, make it, but it could also be obsessing about whether you have it, whether you don't have it. If you don't have money, you feel no self-worth. If you have some extra money, you feel good about yourself. Like there's a lot of insecurities that play into what's in somebody's bank account when they have second house stuff. What 
things are they wearing? What do they own? And my roommate who has a second house stellium, he can very much, because it's in Capricorn, right? And I see this in myself with my stellium in Capricorn, is that whatever that's in, you kind of reject because you know so much about it. Yeah. You can see the truth to it. Says, it's Capricorn Sun Sun. Yeah, because it's Capricorn Sun and Mars is also in there. And so I find that he goes like, I know how much this means to me, but I hate how much it means to me. So I'm going to kind of try to reject it, but it'll always be a little bit of that insecurity there. So it can cause a lot of instability in almost the day-to-day -day life. Even though it doesn't rule the day-to-day -day life, you are coming into contact, obviously, with things every day. Also, another pitfall of a second house concentration is the obsession, right? Mm -hmm. Too much of one thing is never good. So whenever we talk about stelliums in each house, you might think like, it's terrible to have a stellium in this house. But honestly, every stellium kind of has a lot of downfalls. But I think of the kind of pitfall in um, the sense of if you ever have watched Pretty Woman, Richard Gere's character, this as an eighth house son really spoke to me, really kind of like fucked me up the way that he was in that movie and obviously he changes at the end and blah blah but he has this realization in it. Does it ever bother you that we don't make anything, that we don't contribute anything. Right, that that's such a second house. His entire job, I think he like buys companies and then resells them. Mm -hmm. It's entirely based on security. Mm -hmm. There's and somebody nothing else's. Yeah, they, well. it, there's so much of um, that emphasis that that's what it becomes all about. Mm -hmm. Like your self-worth is rooted in in your security. Mm -hmm. It's not rooted in the desire to give back. Second house also shows how you spend a little extra money. Yeah. What are you gonna spend it on? What you do know? you spend your money on? Are you gonna be secretive about it? Are you gonna hide it away? You're not gonna show it, you're not gonna spend it, you're gonna save it. Cancer, you're gonna go on emotional retail spree. Yes. Oh my gosh, if you're sad and you're in the mall, right? So we're gonna get into the planets, but if you do not have any planets in your second house, you just have a second house cusp ruler that dictates how the second house is affected in your birth chart, we actually have a blog post that's coming out at the exact time that this video is released, which is just a really simple breakdown of every different house cusp ruler so that you can read that and that correlation. And we're going to have a blog post that comes out with every video just on that same subject. So it'll be linked down below. Mm -hmm. The lovely Nina wrote it because God knows I can't write. <laughs> <laughs> but on to the planets. We'll start off with the sun and we touched on this a yeah, little bit. Yeah, it's, it's a very strong just relationship to your ego and Yourself. your sense of security. Mm -hmm. How much money you have in your bank account. It, maybe it's reminiscent of Leo ruling the second house. Wanting to make your money in something that showcases your ego. Yes, showcases um, yourself. Also a much more ego driven placement than you think you don't think necessarily of you know every sign has an ego of some sort right but you're not gonna think of Taurus as like number one of the ego right but it, it is very connected because it's about the self-worth yes so when somebody's self-worth is touched like something that they hold very dear to themselves that they say like let's say their self-worth is derived from how well they take a picture. They find self-worth from good photography. Mm -hmm. When somebody says and is critical of that picture, it's gonna it's feel like an ego, ego hit. Yeah. These are also kind of people that can be bought and sold, yeah. right? Because the the sun is in the is in the second house where they get their egos from the things that they own. So they kind of can sometimes, depending on the chart, can put away what they may want blah 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 or even begrudgingly because their end goal of what they know makes them feel the best is that result of that check you know or it could even go in the opposite direction yes. they have a very high price tag yes they won't settle for doing something that mm -hmm. does not truly fulfill their ego yeah, that leo true. with leo in the second yes. house we won't do things for the sake of doing it if they don't yes. satisfy it, the own yeah it's the same thing probably even stronger with yeah. sun, in the, sun in the second house if it's positively aspected and happy yes. you hold yourself at a high esteem mm -hmm. whereas maybe a negatively aspected sun and and a debilitating placement right might sell themselves because even though and go against their wants mm -hmm. to get that because they know like i'm I'm not getting any ego from these other things. I guess I'll get ego from that. Moon. So the moon is another one of those things where it, it really is a planet that hugely 
affects the house. The moon mm -hmm. is prominent in this because the moon is the fastest changing planet slash luminary. So wherever it is, wh whatever house it falls into, shows um, a lot of turnover in that house, in this mm -hmm. case money. Um, a lot of instability, unpredictability mm -hmm. in your income source. And then also, because it is highly tied to your emotions, highly, highly, <laughs> there is a big um, need to have an emotional fulfillment from how you make your money yes. and a lot of times that translates as not having a nine to five that gives you a paycheck every two these weeks. tend to be more artistic types and you don't think of the second house as that but it can be because it's it's the things that make you you mm -hmm. you know what I mean so these can be like a very artistic house because it can be that emotional fulfillment that you're seeking from your money which a lot of times you will find in the arts mm -hmm. Not always, but yeah. sometimes. Uh, Mercury. Mercury. So Mercury has a duality aspect. So in the second house, it could mean that you're a multitasker. Mm -hmm. You make money from different yeah. income sources. Mm -hmm. But usually from an intellectual standpoint. Yes. You want to earn money from your smarts. Yes. And if you're not intellectually invested in the thing, if you don't, if it doesn't suit up to your intellectual capacity or what you are thinking, you're not going to want anything to do with it, kind of. You probably also, Mercury can have like that Virgo-ness to it, right? So it can be very, it can be a little stingy even. Mm -hmm. You can track down your expenses. Yeah, it's practical. You know? um, mm -hmm. And it's detail oriented. Mm -hmm. So you're going to be very detail oriented with how you um, spend, spend your money. Yeah. Venus in the second house is quite the blessing yes. for this world. Venus blesses any house that it's in. Yeah, so if you just have Venus in there, you're going to find that you know how to schmooze your way to make money. You know what I mean? Like You can make money off of your beauty. Yeah, you can make and money off of your beauty. And it's another beauty, beauty, or charm. Not even, uh, not even your beauty, but out of the earth as well. Mm -hmm. And you want everything that you're surrounded by and that you wear to be beautiful and of luxury. Like, I think of like, I hate Lana Del Rey, but I think of Lana Del Rey when I think of that. Mm -hmm. I know she's like Venus in the first, but like she kind of gives off that essence of like everything I own is beautiful and retro. Like I think of that. Yeah, moment. I would think like a makeup artist would probably yeah. have this oh, position. Oh yeah, a fashion designer because it's also and they also love things. Yeah, love things. Love almost things. too much. You can overindulge on <laughs> too many things. <laughs> um, and also it's a very social. Yes, because um, Venus has a lot to do with relationships and you can get money from your the social ladder. Yeah, like and climbing up the social ladder. Mm -hmm. Mars. In this is gonna shake house. up the second house. This is the first of the malefic planets that we talked about. This is gonna be like I want this and I want it now and you can be very streamlined with the things that you want and stuff And you can also be very aggressive when somebody attacks mm -hmm. and if you if your self-worth is being at all belittled You'd be like no, I know what I'm worth and then they tell you mm -hmm. blah, 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 you know Yeah, your self-worth can also um, your ego can have a masculine feeling to it mm -hmm. um, The way that you and what you want and what you wear. You yeah, know? what you feel most um, proud expressing can be more masculine qualities mm -hmm. and this can be also somebody who likes earning money from like survival things yes yeah. you know what I mean because Mars is a very survival Aries fuel planet you might find that you you like things that are more dangerous you mm -hmm. want to earn money from things that are more like like a war or you could be a professional athlete right something like yes that. yes of yeah. course absolutely Jupiter Ooh. in the second house aren't we happy to be here I guess it's mm. um, a catch-22 right because Jupiter is a planet of expansion and luck so you're never going to be without money. Things. You're, you're, you're going, yeah. You're going to find You're gonna have a lot of self-worth. You're gonna really yeah. like yourself. And you're going to find that you or can YouTube. kind of get away with a little bit more. Mm -hmm. um, that you, Whoops, I overindulged and spent a little bit yeah. more. But it is a huge indication of old overindulgence mm -hmm. of kind of like recklessly on a whim yeah. spending. This might be a position where you find you randomly will get a check in the mail uh -huh. and be like, wow, I was really, and you, you're manifest money. I think if you have Jupiter in the second house, really don't ever tell yourself that you're poor. Yeah. <laughs> Always tell yourself that you are rich because that will make you money. Just that positive thought of it. And probably like yeah. moving also, traveling. Mm -hmm. You'll find money maybe in other places. Yeah. So on the one hand, it's it's quite a lucky position. You can manifest a lot of money. It's not a, a ten of pentacles kind of position, mm -hmm. you know? It's There's nothing secure and regimented and certain about it. But you can also maybe gamble. Yeah. You know what I mean? Too much. You can own a little bit too much. You can 
be a little bit too invested in yeah. that kind of stuff and, and money. And this is definitely, I think, Jupiter's second house. If it's if it's kind of in a gross aspect, maybe to like Pluto or something that can be very selfishly wanting money. Yes, you know, definitely look at the sign Big that business. it's in. Yeah, yeah. look at the sign it, that it's in and the aspects to your Jupiter to kind of indicate what relationship is going to have because it can go one of two ways. Saturn in the second house, yee. You will always probably have financial issues. Mm -hmm. You'll have to really go through the ringer with responsibility, yes. with money. You'll have a lot of issues with your self worth. You never feel like you're worthy of probably anyone or anything. You're not yes. worthy of these items. You know? But where you do find your self worth is in your dedication, yes, responsibility, and in your responsibility, hard work. Yeah, this is a placement where hard work is repaid, though. Yes, if you put in the work, you will get back the money. That is the one good thing about it, and that sucks that you can't just get money from schmoozing and whatever, but you. You will get rewarded with the effort that you put in. Uh -huh. Both of my parents have Capricorn in the second house and they were never like specifically felt like they were without money but they never grew up with specifically a lot of they were never spoiled mm -hmm. and they never they were spoiled. given what they needed yeah even if it's not necessarily manifested in feeling restricted or necessarily having to be restricted you just grow up with that more responsible mindset about money mm -hmm. and feeling that your self-worth comes out of that responsibility. Mm -hmm. You're ready to the second house. That's going to cause a lot of changes. Uh, my aunt has this. She works the weirdest jobs. She gets money from the weirdest way. She like never really even earned her own money. Mm -hmm. It just like came and went very easily though. She was without a lot, but she was also with for no reason a lot. <laughs> you know what I mean? There's no um, rhyme or reason. To there's no rhyme or reason to anything. You really can't make sense of it. This is a placement where you have to go with the flow of the money in your bank account mm -hmm. and it can also be a very tumultuous self-worth too mm -hmm. one day you're gonna be like on top of the world you feel so good you're like I'm so sexy and you can take me down and the next day you might feel complete shit about yourself mm -hmm. but also you find self-worth from being truly you yeah and expressing your eccentricities and you can seek a career that is a little offbeat Neptune in the second my parents actually both have this and uh, money is hard to pin down money is hard to understand y you're never sure like even when it's in the savings you're like do I have it it never feels like yours you never feel like you own your stuff yeah you never feel like you even own yourself and what mm -hmm. you want from it. it it can be hard to be in touch with what makes you feel worthy um, yeah also because Neptune is a planet of um, illusions and disillusions and there's a lot of projection that comes with Ooh, Neptune yeah other people can kind of paint your self-worth for you mm -hmm. um, this can also be if you have Libra in the second house yeah um, other people will be like oh well you're great at this and this and this and then you kind of adopt it like oh this is what, what I must be this is yeah, what this my self-worth and these are also people that are very much interested in the arts mm -hmm. want to earn money through artistic things and stuff it's just very hard to understand how to spend it you always feel like you're maybe a little bit naive with money mm -hmm. and you were never really taught how to use it properly so you always feel like your mistake might be a little like your your choices on what to spend are a little bit off Pluto in the second house is probably I envision somebody who builds this grand thing has all this money and then it just gets completely wiped out you know what I mean and then they have yeah. to rebuild themselves it can also be an indication of maybe you grew up in a very wealthy family yeah and then that goes away something triggers a maybe loss. your house burned down. Yeah. Maybe some traumatic event happened where you lost all of your belongings yeah. in early in life. But you are completely detached from your items because you know how quickly that they can okay, they can leave you. Mm -hmm. So these are the kind of people to like my friend has this and she'll start a painting and then halfway through she'll go, This sucks, I'm destroying it. She gave me a painting of myself and she was like, It's unfinished. And I was like, the Molly way. <laughs> <laughs> they can get very intense about what they're doing and very invested and very like streamlined. And then they can completely destroy and like completely be over it kind of situation. Yeah, and that's also how their self-worth can feel. Mm -hmm. They'll spend like tons of time stacking it on top of each other and then one little thing will whoosh, take it all away. Well, these are people that might have secretive hobbies, yeah. secretive money. They might have money stashed away. You know what I mean? For like, these are the kind of people who like bury money around. Like yeah. gold. Like Ron Swanson, like put gold somewhere. Or they like freeze all their money and put it under their mattress. Yes. Because there's- um, They don't trust the banks. Yeah, they don't, they don't trust, trust anybody else with their money. Very and paranoid I'll, about I've it. said it a billion times. I'll say it again. These are people who are investing in cryptocurrency. Yes. And like paying their rent in weird ways. Yes. They'll sell their organs. Sell their eggs or something. Yeah. You know? Even sex. this could be somebody- Sell your sex bodies. Work. Yeah, sex workers. Okay. Oh, but you can also uh, get a lot of power. 
Because it, it kind of can go either way, right? Powerful. But with the conclusion, I want to say, I really think that you should look to your second house to see how you find your self-worth and really embrace that part. Because it's kind of like what your ascendant is missing a little bit. Mm -hmm. Like what... It's what backs up your ascendant. It, what backs up, it, makes, it fulfills you, but yet it's something that might not be as comfortable to show, I think, because of the nature of when one sign goes into another, there's a lot of differences. Mm -hmm. And don't get too caught up in the second house. In this world, we tend to get very caught up in what we own and money, and it is such an important house and stuff, but... Going back to how much of a capitalist society that we are in and kind of the connection of um, the second house being of money and of security and of self-worth, um, it's a good opportunity to consider what you spend your money on and what you are um, voting for. Right. What you are... You vote with your dollar. Yeah, and kind, of and kind of how that speaks to your character, kind mm -hmm. of how that speaks to your self-worth. If you have stocks in Monsanto, mm -hmm. that speaks a lot to your self-worth. Yeah. We know this, these are long videos, but we have a lot of information to get through. And yeah. we don't want to miss anybody out. I'm trying yeah. to tell everybody who's there. Make sure that you go to our website to check out the blog post to see what your house ruler says about your second house. And while you're at it, if you found this video interesting but you would like to know more about how to incorporate the second house into a comprehensive reading of your birth chart, definitely make sure to check out what our astrology course has to mm -hmm. offer you. Bye! Bye! Uh, we'll see you next video for our third house!